Hey guys, Joel, Police 108 Talk here back with you. Officer Bosco is here with us again today. We uh, we like a great many of you guys. We we do quite a bit of perusing on YouTube, looking at weapon reviews, techniques, what have you. And we I think both of us have kind of developed like our, our pet peeve is and we we are by no means firearms professionals we uh, we but the draw guys the draw we see so many videos on youtube i don't know where these guys are, are coming up with these techniques for these these draws but it it kind of agitates me does it bother you at all it does i mean there's uh, you know there's not a universal catch-all i mean we're going to go over actually two of the main stances that you see nowadays uh basically uh, Officer Joel is going to be demonstrating isosceles, which is the way he shoots. I'm going to demonstrate the weaver, which is the way I shoot. Those are the two main ones that you do see. Um, you do see people shooting some crazy stances I've never seen before, but if it, you hit the target, so be it. So if it works for you. Um, but we believe that uh, we're just going to de demonstrate the two main ones, uh, especially for law enforcement. These are essentially the ones that are taught at the academies. Uh, so we're just going to kind of go over, but yeah, I've, I'm like you. I've seen shooting stances where I don't, I don't know how they hit the target. To be blindly honest with you, yeah, so you know, but we're not, we're not experts. We're not, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to say our way is the only way. We're, so. we're just going to present our. We're going to take this opportunity to present our opinions on this. It's it's a controversial thing, but we're we're going to go just do uh, real quickly. We're going to go over draws and presentations. So if you'll give us a minute, we'll be right back with you. Hey guys, Joel here, Police 108 Talk. Uh, back to, uh, I'm gonna spend a couple minutes with you going over presentations, uh, and then I'm gonna step out and Officer Bosco is gonna come in, but it, I, I, I see it all the time. And just before I get started, I want you to know that myself, Officer Bosco, and one of our guests has safety checked this weapon. So it's completely empty and then it's decocked. One of the biggest things we we run into, and, ju and just I see it all the time in academy classes and even a little bit in some of the in-service training we do. Excuse me, but the gnats are getting pretty ferocious here. I'm oozing sweetness. but. Uh, a lot of times what we see is people are making a draw a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, once you get your grip and you've released your retention, once you get up above the holster level, I see, I see this all the time. I see them come out and, and lay down on the target and they're making it far more complicated than it needs to be. There's one simple movement that you can do once you've cleared the top of the holster, that just keeps that from happening at all. And I, I, I've seen uh, one other video on YouTube where they address this issue. And I know when we train, I, I, it's one of the things I'm shouting so I can be heard. But it, it's very simple. All you got to do when you clear the clear the top of that holster, you got this elbow hanging out here. All you have to do is push the elbow in. That, that's all you have to do. That way, if I'm coming out of the holster, the threat's coming towards me, and I come out. If I'm doing this, if I'm bowling, to, bowling it to get to him, he stands a good chance of, of stopping it right here. And then I, then I put myself in a situation where now I have to be concerned with weapon retention. So you don't want to come out and you don't want to boil, boil it towards the target. You also don't want to come out and cast it. This is the same thing. If that thread is closing on me and I come out and I'm doing this, this is doing me no good. The muzzle here or down here is not doing me any good. If, if the thread is closing on me, I want to come out and if I rotate, just all you have to do is push that shoulder in and bear with me, I'm not trying to point the muzzle directly at the camera person, but I hope you get the gist on what I'm saying. Because if, if they're coming on me, I come here and I rotate up. 
boom, if I have to go to the trigger, I, I'm, I'm in the right position. And then from here, it's just a straight punch out. And that's all it is. So if you guys, if you'll remember, clear the top of that holster, all you have to do is, is push the elbow in and, you, and you're ready. And from there, you're good to go. So now Officer Bosco is going to come in and he's going to go over a few points with you as well. Hi everybody, welcome to uh, back to uh, Police 10 8 Talk. This is Officer Bosco. I'll be going over some different uh, uh, different uh, shooting issues that uh, Mr. Gold is going over as well. I'm also going to go over the difference between the isosceles and the weaver stance. Uh, I'll explain the kind of it, the pluses and the minuses of both. Uh, like I said before, I like the weaver stance. That's the one that I do. Uh, I just like it better. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my firearm in a safe direction. Cock it a couple times to make sure that you can see that it is safe. Always, always safety check your firearm anytime. Uh, one thing I did want to say about the uh, the grip part is one thing you got to remember too, and I see this on TV and it absolutely drives me nuts, which tells me their firearms coordinators on those shows are not very good. You don't hand, you don't hold the gun with that like that. Okay, you want to get the web of your hand deep in there, deep as you can. Okay, I hate nothing drives me n more nuts than on a cop show where they grab the gun and it's like this. That is totally incorrect. I, I don't know how you're going to be able to control that thing. You want to make sure you get the web of your hand as deep in there as you can get it. You know, that drives me nuts. I see it on TV shows all the time, and it's absolutely, it's, well, that is, that's a pet peeve. That, that just kills me when I watch cop shows, and the fact that most of them are pretty fake anyways. But, uh, but anyways, I'm going to uh, basically explain the two differences between the two stance. Now, the isosceles stance essentially is, is isometric. It's basically, you basically have your feet square apart like this, okay? I like bending my knees a little bit. You want to try to hunker down. It's easier a little bit more of a stable position. I got love bugs flying around me. Welcome to Florida. And uh, basically what you do is you come out with the draw and you use both hands basically straight out like this. Okay, and of course it's called the isosceles because if you, you can't really see it, but if you notice my hands are basically an isosceles triangle. Okay, now the, <clears throat> from a law enforcement standpoint, the reason why a lot of uh, people uh, teach this one, their theory is because this is where the majority of your body armor is as a police officer. Um, which that is bullet resistant material. It's not bulletproof. Uh, there is no such thing other than basically like armor. Um, but basically what it, the theory behind the isosceles is the fact that uh, basically you, if anybody does shoot at you, they're going to basically be shooting at the majority of your vest, which of course is going to be in this area here. Okay. Now the, uh, the weaver, which is the one I like, is a little bit different because normally as a cop, and I'll tell you the reason why I like it better, because normally as a cop, you're generally in what we call the interview stance which is essentially this, where you have your uh, one foot forward and one foot back, you know, and of course you always want to try to make sure your gun side's away from whoever you're dealing with, which of course, you know, shooting left hand and my right foot's always out. Um, but the reason why I like the weaver stance, now the other one, they, they want you, your chest, you're basically more presentable to whoever's shooting at you. The reason why I like the weaver is you're a little bit more bladed. So to me, you may have less armor, but you're also, to me, less of a target, which is the reason why I like the Weaver better. I mean, you have basically no real coverage on your sides as much as the front, but I'm also bladed, so I'm a little bit less of a target uh, for them to shoot at, whereas the Sosceles, you're pretty much putting everything right in front of them, which is the reason why I don't like that, okay? Now, this is how you do the Weaver. Basically, you're gonna be slightly offset. Your one foot's gonna be in front of the other, okay? And what you do for the draw, which uh, Joel kind of went over it a little bit, is the, uh, I always like to, just keep the elbow in. Your elbow really shouldn't go out that much, even when you draw, um, because the problem is, you know, you start getting what, uh, especially in rifle rifle firearms, what we call, I call chicken wing. Chicken wing. Chicken wings, because you'll see people shoot a rifle like this with their arms sticking out like that, which is uh, not good. Um, but you get the chicken wing. But anyways, with the weaver, what you do is you basically pull out with your dominant hand you push it forward, and what you do is you use this as the main main arm, okay? This is going to be your main arm that you're going to brace when you're shooting. Your support hand comes up, and what it does is it basically comes at an angle like this, okay? Now, I also like it better, too, because when you're clearing a room and you're trying to go around a corner, I think it's easier to corner with this position as opposed to the isosceles where you see people doing this. Uh, I think doing it with the weaver, just is, it just makes more sense. I think it's just more stable on the platform. 
because you're sticking this hand straight out so all the recoil is coming back on your dominant hand that you shoot with okay um, now another issue you have to address too is one thing I think we went over before is eye dominance I'm right eye dominant but I shoot pistol left-handed so I have to compensate and bring my pistol over to my right eye uh, because of the fact that I am right eye dominant but I shoot pistol left-handed um, but that's the main difference between the weaver and the isosceles stance uh, those are the two main ones that you're going to run into um, and basically that's just a brief description of it and like I said I prefer the weaver it's just a personal choice and one thing also too is anytime you do a stance you know I see people do what I call the lean back or the low rider position yeah. where they want to <laughs> shoot they want to shoot like this I don't know how you can hit a target like this I've seen it it drives me nuts too that's a pet peeve of mine as well you know you want to get down it doesn't matter if you're a isosceles or weaver you want to try to hunker down and you want to get in there deep my usual theory is if my head's almost in between I can almost feel my shoulder bump in my head that I'm down low enough no, you, want to try no, to get low. you want to try and get your nose over your toes yeah you want to try to be in front of it because like I said the low rider position I've seen people shoot like this and uh, they hit the target but I don't know how they do it but to me it's not stable you know because like with Israeli shooting one of the things they teach you is you always want to make sure that you're low to the ground that also makes you less of a target as well if you're kind of if you're kind of hunkered down in there it makes it a little bit easier but it gives you more of a stable platform okay I'm Officer Bosco. Like I said, I just do a little bit, just did a little brief explanation, explanation between the Weaver and Isosceles. Hopefully, gave you some tips you might be able to use. Uh, and anyways, we appreciate you coming back to Police 10A Talk. Remember to be safe and watch your six.